Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. It's great to have you with us and if you are a new subscriber to YouTube, if you would like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate your support. Thank you so much. And if you would like to be notified of any future videos that I have coming out, please press the bell button below. If you are watching from Facebook Live on My Keto Journey, hi guys, I hope that you're having a wonderful Friday. Yay, it's Friday. I have great weekend plans. Oh, it's going to be great. Birthday weekend for my husband. Yay, love birthdays. Um, so anyway, if you are watching from YouTube and you would like to join My Keto Journey on Facebook, please press the Facebook tab above in my banner and that will bring you to our wonderful community. We are uh, a community of about 840-ish members and we are all different shapes, sizes, and we are there to motivate, support, encourage one another. We have tips every single day, recipes that come out every single day. And on Fridays, we have seven-day free meal plans, totally free meal plans that I've tested and tried myself that we have, are putting out every week for our members to make it easier for you. So today, I'm going to talk about 10 things nobody told me about keto. There's probably going to be more than 10 things, but hey, let's get started. My name is Sharon Hartley, and I've been following a ketogenic lifestyle now for 14 months, and I have lost 75 pounds. Wow. Like a whole person almost. A little person, but a big, but big, big change. And it has been the only lifestyle that I have made work. And I have tried so many diets, uh, Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig, Nutrisystem, meal replacement bars, meal replacement meals, um, things that are not safe, tablets, fat blaster, so many things that are not safe. This has been the only, only thing that has worked for me. And I'm telling you, if I can do this, you can do this. I had a very poor, poor perspective of myself. I never thought that I could do this at all. I thought the first week, no way, I could not do this. I loved bread. I loved pasta. I loved sweets. Especially I had a big sweet tooth. I was totally a sugar addict. And just one day, my walls broke down. I was sick of feeling tired. I was sick of feeling lethargic and not being able to move around. My starting weight was at 305 pounds. Wow, guys, 305 pounds. Can you believe that? Now I'm down 230. I have more energy now. I don't have back-related issues much anymore. I do have four bulging discs in my back. Um, but they have totally improved. I still do have RA, but that's through genetics. I'm working on bringing my inflammation down and my polycystic ovary syndrome has completely gone. I have been healed from depression. I'm just totally a new person and you're a new person too. And if you're watching right now, I see a few viewers that we have if you would like to say hey if not that's fine i'm going to go through these 10 things that no one told me about keto and like i said there might be some more that i just put in there because i get a little crazy like that sometimes so let's get started i have written them down so i don't forget them one Poop would feature more in your life because you're eating more fats, you're getting more fats in, you're, if you're incorporating MCT oil, that totally makes you go more regularly. And just, yeah, you, your, your intestines and everything, it's moving at a more rapid rate, weight, you're getting magnesium in, which, which helps things get, go along with the cycle of, of, of pooping. So yeah, that's kind of number one ill factor, but it does happen. So number two, you will have more energy than you have ever had before. So, so true. If I have bulletproof coffee, 
which is butter, heavy whipping cream, coconut oil, MCT oil. It, you do you can do bulletproof coffee any way that you like. A lot of people put uh, different flavored extracts in it if you want that taste, or sugar-free uh, syrups as well. I put the Tirani in sometimes. My favorite would be hazelnut. I love hazelnut or vanilla. I do that. Um, and I just have so much energy. Like I can, I can do things. I can clean my house. I can do my washing. I can take my curtains down, and then I can wash them. I can cook. I'm cooking more. I love to cook. I used to be a a chef. I used to be in catering, and I kind of like didn't work in that field because of so many different reasons. But anyway, I kind of got slack and I was lazy and we were just eating frozen meals all the time. And it was just getting to the fact where I was just, everything that I was doing was just so lazy. I was just putting so much junk into my body and I was just feeling so bad that I would have to take naps throughout the day. I'm not taking any naps at all during the day lately. I had been borderline had been borderline um, hypothyroidism when I came back from Australia recently. I spent three months over there and my thyroid levels, my TSH levels, which is thyroid stimulating hormones, if you don't know what TSH means, they were a little elevated and I was feeling so tired and so lethargic and over there I just wasn't getting enough potassium because I wasn't able to get my supplements over there because you have to have a prescription and my doctor kind of didn't give me a prescription so I went off that for a whole three months and my body really reacted to that but once I got home back to America I started taking my potassium supplements I started having the avocados and all the great potassium um, in mushrooms and things like that and my tiredness totally went away now avocados in australia are super super expensive so it kind of didn't fit in our budget but yeah you definitely need to get you potassium if you're starting to feel tired or lethargic that's what you need to do not all of us need supplements because we may be getting enough in our foods so check to feel how your body's feeling Give your body what it needs. It will tell you. It will tell you what you need. So let's get back to what my 10 things are. Number three, sometimes the scale won't move, but you drop dress sizes. That is so true. The, the scale for me at the beginning, it would go up five pounds and then it would come down five pounds. It would not go up more than five pounds, but I learned that that was water weight. That was if I was having my cycle. That was the bloatiness of my cycle. That was because I hadn't pooped. I hadn't used my bladder. I always, always weigh myself in the morning. And yeah, I weigh myself completely in my birthday suit because clothes, weigh at least two pounds so you should at least deduct two pound off your, off your number so yay isn't that a great idea and if you didn't know that do that and we always weigh more at the doctor's office and we know that it's our clothes our shoes our jewelry our watch fitbit whatever we're wearing they all add up we might have our cell phones in our pockets that's going to weigh more so don't beat yourself up over the scales because they're not true. Measure yourself. Take before and after pictures, before, during and after pictures. I have taken pictures. I, I see, wow, my stomach has really reduced in size. It used to be so big. I see the back, my, my back fat, which we call it back fat. <laughs> um, but the rolls back there have totally reduced. My my thighs, my thighs are a lot, lot smaller than they used to be, guys. I'm going to show you on a video exactly what I look like. Um, it's kind of a little embarrassing, but I'm going to do it because 
I want to encourage you that, yeah, you know, look at me. I can do this. I wish I had have done it at the start, but I didn't. But I can do it now. I can totally do it now. So, so take those pictures. Take those pictures of the flabby arms here. Take them. Because when you get to your goal weight, you're going to have thin toned arms. And you're going to see amazing results. So don't focus on the scales. Don't beat yourself up. If you go up two pounds, five pounds, it's going to come off. I, I tell you it's going to come off. Trust me. I was all like really obsessed with the scales at the start. Now I'm just like, you know, I'm not going to worry about it because I started up with 305. And if I'm not going to go back to 305, never, ever am I going to get back to 305 305 can be gone burnt forever and a size 24 pants and uh nearly a 4x top i'm now in a 16 guys a 16 like normal 16 not a plus 16 a normal 16 so that is what is going to keep you motivated that's what's going to keep you motivated do the pictures even if you, you don't have to show them on social media like I am. Show them to yourself. It's a great motivator. Do it, do it, do it. Okay, so let's get to number three. What is number three? Number three is, number three we just went over. Number four, food that you, you used to love will taste disgusting. So when you're, when you're like totally off the wagon and you might put, like a, a candy bar in your mouth that you used to eat. <laughs> don't. I'm telling you, trust me, don't. It is disgusting. And it made me think at the start, yes, at the start, I used to have cheat days. I'll admit, I'm not perfect. I used to have cheat days. I used to have cookies and, and um, gosh, I can't even remember what I had because it was that long ago. But I'd have the cookies and even though they were sugar-free, I would think, ooh, you know, that, that that sugar tastes so much, like just so disgusting that I'd just spit it out. And I used to have the skinny, the, the skinny type pizza at uh, Pizza Hut. I forget. At some, you know, thin crust, thinking, hey, I'm not getting all of that much carbs. But it was disgusting. I didn't like it because I didn't like to feel bloated or inflammation and I just felt, ugh. And it just was not worth it. It was not worth it, guys. I think that I would rather be healthy and downing my weight than just bloated, exhausted and having foods that I'm not enjoying anymore. I'm not enjoying High carb foods. I enjoy the keto foods. I love keto foods. So get into the keto desserts, the keto treats. Get into loving the keto lifestyle, the low carb foods. If you haven't subscribed to my to my Facebook page, my keto journey, we have wonderful, wonderful re recipes. They're all really great. They've been tried and tested by myself. And my husband and I, we absolutely love them. So let's get down to number five. You will be horrified at the card content in food you used to eat. Totally, yes. I have been in the grocery store. I've picked up something that I used to eat. Just kind of curious to see how many carbs I was putting into my body. And I look at it and I'm like, oh my gosh, does that really say 50 carbs? 50 carbs? Like 20 is my only limit right now. And I was eating 50 in just one product. And it was usually processed packaged foods that I was having. And I was just like, Wow, what was I doing? That what was I doing to my body? My body back then, I was just, just really abusive to myself. I I can tell you, I probably had up to 
close to a thousand carbs a day. I mean, I was a complete carb addict. And it just sickens me now to think how I used to be. And now when I think about it, I'm just not that person. I'm not that person anymore. And I see people in the store who are like, maybe they, I mean, they might be around about 400 pounds. And I want to tell them about the ketogenic diet. I want to tell them about the lifestyle and I want to tell them where I started off uh, because I'll hear people that are just talking between themselves and saying, oh, I'm struggling with my weight, nothing's working. And I want to kind of like butt in and tell them, hey, look, this is what I'm doing. But then some people are like, mind your own business and they look at you weird. But some people are open to hearing about it when I'm out in the store. And so, you know, I share, I share my news with them and they're so excited and happy for me. And then they get started and I start seeing their journey because we connect with each other either on Facebook or YouTube. And it's just, it's so wonderful to know that you can be helping others out. You can be inspiring others out in your journey. It's just amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. It is just great. But seriously, like, when I look back, on the foods that I used to eat. Oh, goodness gracious me. They really need to change the American or whatever country you're in standard diet because it's killing us. The way that we feed our cattle as well as agriculture and we're feeding them corn and grains and they're and they're locked up like prisoners. It's so sad. They should be out in the fields eating grass. And, oh, I just like, I have been vegetarian before, but I can't do vegetarian because my, my eye gets so low. But I did watch a great, great documentary on Netflix. I believe it's also on YouTube as well now. It's called The Magic Pill. Be sure to watch it if you have a next a Netflix a Netflix subscription, be sure to watch it. Sorry, I have allergies. Um, so, yeah, when I've seen that video and I will be doing a movie review on that video, wow, guys, like it really opened my eyes even to see how the corn is grown with all, the, all that pesticide. Oh, it just... I eat kind of organically and I eat as clean and whole food as I can with my budget, with our budget, because my husband too does this. And to see all the carbs in foods and what all the carbs do to his diabetes, he is eating lower carb now and it, he is doing great. He is doing great. Gosh, these allergies are horrible. So let's get to, I believe we were on number six. I kind of get lost in what number we we're at. Oh, we're on number seven. Skipping meals and fasting will make you feel like a superhero. At first, you, if you're doing, if you're new to the keto diet, I suggest that you don't do fasting. If you're new, if you're like three months into it, yes, you can do fasting. You can do intermittent fasting. You can do egg fasting. You can do a fat fast, a baking fast. You can do anything like that. But if you have type 1 diabetes, if you have type 2 diabetes, or if you're insulin resistant or have gallbladder issues or thyroid issues, it's not going to be all that great for you. Always talk to your doctor. I am not a doctor. I'm not offering any medical advice, but make sure that it's safe. It's safe for you. If you're going to incorporate fasting, and if you are any kind of number of diabetic or uh, insulin resistant, you could do up to 16 hours or skip one, skip one meal. I am actually at the moment doing one meal a day, and I do my one meal a day from four till seven, I eat anything I want, low carb, of course, ketogenic, of course, and I stay below my carb count. Sometimes, some days, I stay about 10, round 10, and I notice that if I even go up to 20, the scales will move up because I'm starting to feel bloated. I'm starting to have troubles 
moving with my bowels. I'm not getting enough fiber and things like that. But I can tell you, I feel so great. I never thought that I could fast one meal a day for three weeks. I'm going on my three weeks. We are actually having a 30-day challenge on my keto journey. And if you'd like to jo join, we only have one more week left of actually that challenge. So if you want to jump in for a week, if you want to do intermittent fasting, if you want to do egg fast, a fat fast, or one meal a day fast for just one week, that is fine. You're welcome to join it. We have a thread in the group where you can follow it. It'll give you instructions on how to do it. And if you would like to watch any of my previous videos about fasting, about one meal a day fasting, I have all the information there for you to start today. And I can tell you with my one meal a day fasting, I feel so great. My skin's improved. I'm drinking so much more water and I have come down 14 pounds in almost three weeks. I'm not quite up to my three weeks. I still have like four more days to three weeks, but 14 pounds in three weeks. Wow, that's big. That is big, guys. And also you can have a whoosh of weight, which is comes down just all together, like five pounds all together. And what that is, is it's, the fat cells, you're filling them up with water and then the fat cells burst and you flush out your system and five pounds come off. And when that happens and when I look on the scales and that happens, I go, woohoo, I'm so excited. So we have someone watching with us today. If you would like to say hi, if not, that's cool. I hope that you're enjoying watching the video. So we're going to get down to, I believe it was number eight. Number eight is vegetables will probably cause digestive issues. Yes, some do, some not. Um, some do kind of back you up, but you've got to get your vegetables in, guys. Like, like that is going to be your dietary fiber because you're not getting a whole lot of dietary fiber in with this lifestyle. So you need to eat broccoli and cauliflower. Cauliflower has been really my favorite. I've never really liked it when I was a kid. It had to always have the cheese sauce on it. Mum used to make the cheese sauce like out of the package, uh, processed stuff. But now I make it with cream cheese and I put bacon bits in it. I florette the cauliflower up. I steam it in the microwave, flop that in a dish and I make it. And I also have a video of when I was making that in Australia, it was actually on Christmas Day. So if you would like to search for that video, it's right there for you to search. And I had so much fun. My mum and I had so much fun cooking that together. And my mum's doing a ketogenic lifestyle and she is so great. She started off at an 18. She's never battled with her weight her whole entire life. She's always been super thin. And she has gotten down to a size 12. She suffers with arthritis so bad. It's in her blood. And she has been on numerous injection, injections. And so this is really helping her inflammation. Getting all these vegetables in her diet is really helping her inflammation. So vegetables really help inflammation. But do be, do be sure that some can cause digestive issues. If you have gallbladder issues, if you have... Acid reflux, and I'm totally healed from that. I had really bad acid reflux, like so bad that the food would come up in my mouth. It was horrible. It's it's called GERD, and it's totally gone away. Some foods that I eat, acidic foods like tomatoes and stuff, and they're not really uh, ketogenic, um, but they are if you have less than a cup. I noticed that if I have tomato-based sauces and stuff, it'll flare up a little bit. But not as bad, not as bad, guys. So, yeah, that was number, let's see what number that was. That was number nine. And I will tell you, number 10 has been a great one for me. Number 10 has really changed my life. I have been an insomniac for a pretty much all my entire life. I would stay up all night, all hours of the morning. I would be on the computer, I'd be watching Netflix, or when I met my husband online, we would be online talking on Skype for hours and hours and hours, and I just would not sleep. 
I would not be able to get to sleep. I had tried everything, lavender oil on my pillow, having a hot bath at night with bubble bath. I love bubble bath. I love soaking in the tub. Um, having chamomile tea, any kind of herbal teas, things like that. Putting peppermint oil, rubbing it on my temples. Nothing could work. Nothing would help me sleep. I was so tired the next day. I was not being, a, I just was not function at all. Even caffeine would not, that would only hype me up, like I would be crawling the walls with caffeine. Um, so I stopped my caffeine consumption for quite a while. I hadn't had coffee for quite a while. But when I got on the ketogenic lifestyle, I started drinking a lot of coffee. I must say I drink a lot of coffee. But with the ketogenic diet or lifestyle, because I drink so much water and because the lifestyle is so great, I'm able to sleep like like that. I go I go to bed. Sometimes I'll take the melatonin, but not not a lot, not all the time, because sometimes your body your body can rely on that and get into a rhythm where it doesn't work. But my head would hit the pillow and I'd be out. I'd be totally out. I was such a light sleeper before keto. And now I'm not like every single noise would wake me up. And it was so annoying because everything would wake me up. And I'd be like, Ugh. you know, and I would have baggy eyes and I would just be taking naps during the day. Yeah, I would take naps because, like, I don't work right now. I'm a stay-at-home wife. I take, for, I take care of my husband who is disabled. And so, yeah. So I can't really think of any more than 10 because I did actually think that I would have more than 10. There's so many more that there's probably more than, than 10 and probably after I do this video, I'll think, oh, darn it, I should have told them about this and that. But yeah, okay, yes, and number 11 was I'm now off antidepressants. I'm not taking any, any more antidepressants. I'm totally healed. I am not suffering with irritable bowel syndrome. I used to. I used to. I had to run to the bathroom. Like I would be eating a meal and it was specially with meat, guys. I would be eating spaghetti. They used to be my favorite spaghetti. Now I have spaghetti with zoodles, with zucchini noodles. Um, and now I don't need to go to the bathroom. And I don't need to be looking for a bathroom when I'm out at the mall. Because that's how I used to be. That's how I used to be. It was so horrible. It was so horrible, guys. And then when the acid reflux as well, that's what I told you. I'm totally healed from that, except for maybe some foods flare it up every now and then. So just coming off, off that medication of antidepressants, not feeling depressed anymore, not feeling like my blue days, not not napping during the day, not feeling lifeless, not not even really wanting to live life. That's how bad I got. You know, I was even suicidal. I attempted suicide and I don't suggest that anyone gets that rock bottom. If you are, please seek, please seek medical advice or therapy. I have been doing therapy all my life. And you know what? I don't need that anymore. I rely on my faith, my belief in God. I, I um, rely on my friend's support. My, my group is there to encourage me and motivate me and support me. And I will tell you also that nobody really told me that being on social media, doing YouTube and Facebook would really, really help. I thought, no, I'm going to get judgments. I, I'm... I'm not confident enough to do that, but now I am. I actually, my husband told me that I should have done YouTube a long time ago. I should have done it right from the beginning, but no, I didn't. I said, I will do Facebook first, see how that goes. It, oh, I mean, seriously, guys, I didn't think that I would have 845 people watching everything I do. And yeah, I have my moments, guys. I'm not perfect. I have my moments. I have my dad. I have my bad days. We all have our bad days, okay? So we all have our bad days. We're not perfect. Don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up. I have so many people here in the group saying, 
oh, I had a bad day, I ate something off plan, I'm going to get right back into it. Well, you know what? This is a lifestyle. This is for life. So you're doing it for life. So if you slip up, and I'm not saying slip ups and mistakes are great things to do on the ketogenic diet. They're not. But we're all human. We're all human. We all do it. I'm not telling you that I'm perfect. I do it too. There's stuff that, like, you know, like I said earlier on, I ate cookies and things that, like the skinny pizza at Pizza Hut. And, and I just knew that that wasn't for me. And when I was eating healthy, I was feeling so great. I was feeling so great. My body loved it. So now I'm giving my body what it needs. And you guys, I'm so proud that you have made this change, that you have committed to yourself. You've made a promise to yourself and you're dedicated to this. And I would love to hear about 10 things keto, about 10 things nobody told you about keto when you started keto. And yeah, just share, share, share. So if you'd like to share in the comments below, please comment in the comments below. If you have any questions about anything that I spoke about in this video, please comment them in the comments below. If you just want to say hi, send some love, that'd be great. I'd love to hear from you. So thanks for watching this video. If you have liked this video, press like. And if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please subscribe. Thank you for your support. If you are, are, if you are a returning watcher, thank you for coming back. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I hope that you have a great weekend. Oh, it's going to be beautiful weather this weekend. So enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Take care, guys. Kid on. Bye-bye.